folks, we are here in Paddington Station and we're gonna head on an adventure today. Yes, we're going to Stonehenge. It's an all day event, 12 hours on a bus. And I don't like bus tours, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna show you what this is about. You ready, Dawn? Ready. Let's do this. It's a lot quieter down here early in the morning than what it is in the evening. And we're here at Paddington Station. In fact, just over there is the station. That's the station we arrived on. We're gonna head to the, um, the tube, which is just down here. Jamie had to stay back today. She's still, you know, taking care of that ankle. We're gonna head over to the Victoria Station and catch that motor co coach. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's quiet here. The next station is Bayswater. Yeah, we're here at Victoria Station. Let's head up to the Victoria Coach Station. And we're tour 79 and it's at 8 a.m. Hey Dawn, look, our bus has just arrived. It's the London Double Decker bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully it's a little something a little more modern than that, right? It, that'd be fun though. Uh, that's the bus we're gonna be taking. It's a it's a double decker. And we're going up. <laughs> We're on the bus, Gus. <laughs> bus, bus. <laughs> uh, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Bus smells nice, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That seems okay. Oh. Well done. As we are seeing four sites, we are going to start in, in Windsor Castle. After that, we're going to go to Stonehenge. Then we're going to go to Lake Oak, where we're going to have pub lunch. That's going to be roughly around 3 o'clock. So it's not going to be... It's just how, how, how it is, of course. We are dependent on the distances. And then at the end, we're going to the beautiful town of Bath and then back to London. Roughly, cannot, I don't think we can make it much before 8.30. So between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the evening. So very late arrival back to London because we are traveling to four places. We're visiting them. And of course, there's also a lot of driving around. We're going almost completely to the west of England. We are going to be driving to Windsor Castle first and uh, Windsor Castle is of course uh, very well secured so once we are there you might want to leave any sharp objects on the coach yes. look around us a bit these huts on your right hand side have decisions from the beaches of Normandy that's of course by 1944 the deal landing now this on your right hand side that is the back of the Buckingham Palace this Buildings don't look too much there where the, the staff lives, about 250 of them would live now in the palace. King Charles, I was just told yesterday, is not going to move back. He's going to stay in Clarence House and using Buckingham Palace just as his office. Now, if you might be looking at the barbed wire, it was put here in 1982 to keep Camilla out, but it didn't work, as you well know. <laughs> Actually, if you're watching The Crown, the incident with Michael Fagin really happened. He climbed the drain pipes of the walls, got into the Queen's bedroom, sat on her bed, started chatting to her until the butler came, uh, until the lady that brings her breakfast came in and then she summoned help. Queen had a buzzer that she pressed, but it well, the police thought it was faulty. The policeman that is supposed to be in front of her bedroom went to have a cup of tea. And uh, even when he was climbing through the windows of the Buckingham Palace, the alarms were ringing, but they did a very short sweep. So after that, they said, okay, Queen is not as safe as she might need to be, so let's add up the barbed wire. And as far as we know, no one else got in since then. Now, most of the castles we have in England, they started during the reign of Henry, uh, of, of William the Conqueror. So, first he was known as William the Bastard, then he defeats the last king, king of England, and then he's known as William the Conqueror. So, he knew 
that he has about 10,000 knights and there's over a million English people living here. They just got all their lands, lands stolen from them and they might not like that. So to keep them in place, to show them who's the new boss, he starts building castles. Start Oh, there it is, Windsor Castle, wow. Yeah, so we're here with the tour group. The bus is full today, and our tour guide has been very helpful and very knowledgeable. Uh, she knows a lot about English history, very, very good. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna take this long walk to, uh, to Windsor Castle, and they say there's a lot of walking today. You'll do over 13,000 steps. Queen Elizabeth lived here from 1926 to 2022. So it looks like we're heading into the castle. Now what we're hearing is there's no video or photos inside of buildings. But I'll just tell you what we experience. We've got our armbands ready to go. Yeah, so we just went through a metal detector and some screening. So we are here at Windsor Castle. One of the most famous castles in England. Uh, a lot of history here. Queen Elizabeth spent a lot of time here. It's still an active royal palace. Um, it's amazing. Take a look around. Let's see what's going on. This is where the archers would pull back their, their bows and shoot arrows outside. You see that, Don? Yeah, that's what the archers would do. Here's the castle here, and it's, it's big as you can see. And it was built in different stages. You got that one over here, and of course this one here. So technically it's like three different castles all in one different years that it was built. I can see the reason why the Queen loved this place. What do you think? It's a castle, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. So they have a little, uh, just different little shops and and that's where we need, that's where we want to go, over here. So the first thing we're going to tour is St. George's Chapel and uh, it's known for uh, some of the weddings that they have, some of the royal weddings. We're gonna go in and check that out. Some of these scenes you might recognize from the, the royal weddings. You know what I mean? All the, all the limos or like the horse carriages and everything else come through here, yeah. It's amazing. I love the, look at the, all the, the stonework, all the little gar gargoyles. You see them up there? A little bit of a lineup this morning. Beautiful castle, isn't it? Wow, it is definitely the biggest castle. And I thought the Tower of London was the biggest castle. This is definitely the biggest castle I have ever uh, seen, bar none. Yet again, all the little work up there. Hey Don, could you imagine the folks that have walked through this, this arch here? Wow. And, uh, yep, no, no video or photography. Womp, womp, womp. We just got to see Queen Elizabeth's tomb in there. And uh, it, was, it was really something, wasn't it, Don? Yes, and a lot of other kings, Jane Seymour, uh, just, just a lot of notable figures in history. That there was worth it, just in that. Wow, amazing. Okay, now we're gonna walk through the castle, see what kind of trouble we can get into. They don't allow you to film in any of them. Totally understandable. And 
And this is Windsor. It's a very nice town. I love the layout. It's got that medieval look. Ah, it's a cold one here in jolly good old England here. Freezing. Windy too. What did you think about Queen Elizabeth? Oh, it's beautiful in there. Wow, yes. It was it was amazing. It was probably the highlight of the whole thing. Um, it's amazing that she was, you know, just just over there a couple feet from you when you walk by. So we just left the castle. So it was totally amazing. Uh, all the furnishings in there were just like, just like you think it would be all gold, you know, plated and just, wow. Um, the dining rooms were amazing. The, the paintings were just, and the rooms were huge. Like the biggest rooms I've ever seen. what did you think, Don? It was, it was. Highly recommend it. Uh, yes, we had to walk through pretty quick though. We didn't have enough time. The only bad thing, well, the only bad thing about these tours is they don't give you enough time. So we just kind of walked through, uh, but we did get to see everything and um, I have a better understanding about a lot of things. So the next time we come back, we'll be able to, you know, take in a little more. Now, we couldn't film in there. They don't allow any filming photography, nothing whatsoever. Pretty much the rule is, is that if it's got a roof, no filming in it. So, but, I mean, where else can you... Yeah, so we're here in the gift shop. I'm going to get this button for my collection. It's, um... The Queen's Jubilee. It's kind of like leftover from the Jubilee. Pretty cool. It's only uh, two pounds. And of course they have all kinds of great things to take home with you. I love all the, the cups and the plates. We got a 12 hour tour today. This is only the first stop. The one thing I like was all the dinnerware. And some of that dinnerware dated before the United States was even a country. Wow, is that something? There's plates in there older than the United States. And there's one of those crazy soldiers over there. I think we'll go there and mess with him. I don't think he plays real well. <laughs> he probably doesn't play good with others. I absolutely love Windsor, this town with all of its narrow streets. We're back here at the motor coaches, yes. And like I said, if you want to take your time, this is probably not the thing to do. But this is a good way to see a lot in a short period of time. Folks, we <laughs> ran into some friends here in England. Hi, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Yes, thank you guys thank so you. much. Beautiful. Oh, castle is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that certain of the houses are painted pink. Those are the so-called houses that are grace and favor. So they belong to the queen and she can give them to people that worked for her for many years, her reliable servants or the minor royals. So, so our next destination is Stonehenge. Yes, that's where we're heading. We got a little welcome book here. And we got a little wristband. Yeah, Dawn, yeah, Dawn's got her wristband on for Stonehenge. And my whole life I've looked at pictures. But today is the day we're going to yeah, visit the actual thing. Now we visit a foam hinge, a wood hinge. I think we even seen a car hinge, right? Well, today we're going to be doing the, the, the real thing, right? Tons sleeping over there. 5,000 years ago. And of course, Britain looked very different at that time. It was the end of what we call the Stone Age, Neolithic, New Stone Age. People that the first that have started building the stones didn't yet know neither the bronze or metal tools, so no metal tools 
uh, or armor or weapons, uh, and they also did not know the wheel. So everything was done, at least in the beginning stages, without those technologies. There was not many of them living here, roughly a couple of ten thousands. They were not organized any great king, it was just uh, small tribes. And uh, the most of the island at that time was heavily wooded. There would be woods, there would be trees everywhere. They just started farming some thousand years ago. However, this part of England, the Salisbury Plain on which Stonehenge stands, had looked quite similar to how it looks like today already. An open grassland, an open plain, and I guess that would mean that it would be very attractive for those farmers because of course you did not need to put up put down all those trees with with stone tools so it's 12 55. ah so we just got off the bus about an hour and a half drive from windsor castle and we're out here in salisbury <laughs> england at stonehenge i don't see it yet i don't see you think we're looking for it like where is it like well, anyway, so we're going to go see Stonehenge, and that looks like a welcome center just over there. English Heritage Stonehenge. Looks like they have a little, like, little um, place to have, like, lunch. This is the tickets here. Ours were included. Everything was included in our price today. Shuttle you in. So we got off a bus and... We're gonna have to get on a on another bus. Some folks have decided to walk in. You see folks walking along the road, and it is a long walk from the visitor center. out there Don it's our first look at it yeah, yeah, just out over there uh, it's a it's cold out here <laughs> right here in the Salisbury Plains is what they call it <laughs> it's right there dude yes yeah, so they no longer let you walk around them you have to stay on the path here but at one time you were able years and years ago and uh yeah there they are the real thing it's awesome what do you think it's awesome awesome <laughs> you come all the way to england and you say it's awesome and then what word do you use great is it everything you thought it would be yeah i'm just shocked to be here they're there, Don. <sighs> so there's actually two circles here. And you can see that these ones have fallen down. Mm -hmm. But... Oh. Stonehenge. <laughs> Stonehenge. It can be difficult to get a photo. Everybody's all trying to get their perfect photo, but yeah, we're less than 10 feet away from it, standing right here, over 5,000 years old. Yeah. Just a, we're out here just seeing a bunch of stones in a field, right? <laughs> Come all this way to, to see that, huh? Wow. The, the summer and winter solstice can be marked through here. There's a lot of, some folks think that this is a landing pad for aliens, I guess, you know. I'm, I guess it's whatever you take it. So it, it is as big as what I thought it would be. It looks exactly the way I thought it would look. You know, sometimes you go visit these places in real life, they're, sometimes they look smaller than, but this one here looked magnificent. Uh, it's amazing. Ah. Uh, and it's right next to an expressway here. So if you're going down this expressway, you can see it, you know, from, that's pretty cool. But.
That was absolutely mind blowing. Wow. Yeah, I got the I got a photo. I got some good photos, you know, of just standing next to it and and that kind of reminds me of uh, National Lampoon's European Vacation, where old Clark backs into it. Which, in real life, you can't get anywhere near with a car, but you know, just uh, things like that, and you know, growing up and in textbooks and seeing the Stonehenge and reading about it and and uh, the mystery of it, you know, is it aliens, is it ancient druids, you know, all that, and uh, we know more about it today than we knew about it when I was growing up. So it was always mysterious and finally got to see it. It's uh it was a blast. Well worth it for me. I think it was well worth it for you, wasn't it? It's very well worth it. It's glad that we got to do this together. First I think we're going to visit the gift shop. Then we're going to an old English pub for lunch. We'll show you that. And then we're going to Bath still. We're going to go to Bath, you know, which is the Roman baths. Ooh, we spent a good 20 minutes with them. Now it's time to get on the bus. The bus is very welcoming because the, the wind just whips across the plains and it's cold. It gets to your, your bones good. Wow, once in a lifetime experience. Just super blessed to be able to do this. So kind of emotional over it. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. You know, kind of cool. And yet again, on a tour, you don't always have all the time you would like. And there's a lot of things to explore, like these mounds and what they mean. And you can spend I don't know, a couple hours out here just uh, taking everything in. So here's a display of what it would look like when they were moving these big stones, or at least just with the way they they thought they moved them on these logs here. Yeah, that's a real rock. I think they this is a real Nope, it's it's fiberglass. It's it that one's easy to move. <laughs> uh, now here's a real rock that it's made out of that you could you could touch. A real piece of Stonehenge you can touch. And this is what the village would look like. That's what the homes of the builders would look like anyways. Uh, this is what have been their their homes. I stopped off at the gift store and I got a Stonehenge hat, right? And then I got a, a little, ah, there it is, a little pin for the map there. So I got some stone hinge merchandise. It was fun. That was great. He explained to you winter and summer solstice. Now that you've seen it, maybe it's going to be easier for you to imagine. So if you stand inside the horseshoe and you look towards the entrance, you would see on our longest day in a year, the sun rising above it. And then if you turn around, because it, it does a half a circle, the stone, and you now look towards the back, the sunset would be framed by the larger stone in the horseshoe. This on the left hand side, it's a patched roof or cottage with a patched roof. So they're very common. There's going to be lots of them on our way. Um, this is not a very wet part of England. The, the, it's not that many rainy days here in this central part because it's quite southern. So you can have a straw patch roof. Otherwise, in more rainy parts like uh, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland, you would have made it more from reeds, uh, but it gets darker, so it gets brown with time. So those are pigs outside. They are outside all year long. Now we are in the county of Wiltshire. So there are many counties in England. This one here is Wiltshire, after that we go to Somerset. Left and right you mostly see fields, it's of course winter, so not much work has been done, but uh, they might start it soon, uh, so Salisbury Plain is not very, very populated, there are no big places, just small villages and a lot of uh, farms as well as some military installations. 
and the pub is going to be in a different geographical ear area of England, a very famous one, known as the Cotswolds. So Cotswolds is a very, um, very popular area with the, the tourists. It is geographical ear area that is of an outstanding natural beauty, which means a bit less protected than there would be natural parks but you cannot just randomly buy a land there, a farmland, and buy yourself and make yourself a house or something like that. So there are certain restrictions in place. So more of the attached houses, they're very popular. The best thing about attached roof is that it's going to be cool underneath during the summer and warm underneath during the winter, which is obviously just opposite of your typical roof typical apartment in in London. So uh, insulation on this thatch is quite strong, it's quite good. So here you see maybe more easy when we are closer to it to observe that it has chicken wire on top. That one on the right hand side, the Rose and Crown pub has also a uh, uh, bird on top. So different animals, not the whole way, sometimes it's just the pattern on the roof. If you look on the right hand side, uh -huh. you can see quite a quite a lot of pattern. It's almost someone went stitching there. I think on this oh, road there's yeah, also a rabbit. Roofs. So, oh there, on the right hand side there's a heart. Hunt <laughs> heart. Never paid attention. This one on your right hand side in the corner has been recently retouched. You can see it's much more yellow than the rest. The rest are more brown. Now we're here in the town of Laycock, and uh, it's known for, they filmed a lot of the Harry Potter stuff here. Oh, and really? Yeah, and a lot of movies were filmed here. And also the Abbey is the first photo ever taken in, um, in England. Pretty cool, first photo ever. So, oh my gosh, this town is super charming. Look at this. It does look like something out of like Harry Potter or something, the old walls and And this is a school, 1824, and it still uses a school. Lunch is going to be served at the George Inn, established in 1361. Some diet Pepsi's with ice. Ice is very hard to, to get <laughs> around here. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little place, isn't it? So this is my steak pie. Look at that. It's got a little mashed potatoes down below. Looks really good. Yeah, it's got some peas over here. A little bit of broccoli. It's got some gravy in there. It's kind of like a you know, kind of like a a beef stew, a beef. Yeah, I can't talk today. Like a beef cup pie? A beef. It's more like a beef stew. Yeah. Yeah. Without carrots or whatever. These look good. All right. With the broccoli. <laughs> I guess with the broccoli. I'm trying to get a pea. You're trying to get the pea, huh? I don't think it's going to work. Oh, I got, I'm going to take a bite of the broccoli. Yeah, okay. Fish. The broccoli. Go ahead and try that pie, though. Check, tell me what that pie is. There you go. Get a little bit of the crust. The crust is where it's at on this too. Of course, that um, that steak looks really good. 
here we go. I'm trying to go. It's pretty good. It tastes kind of like a um, like a pot. a pot pie. Yeah, I know this wasn't isn't your style, but no. But um, so you got fish and chips coming. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is definitely I like that. It's got a little mashed potatoes. I want to pee. There. <laughs> this is such a treat, you know. Here in a pub that was built in the 1300s before America was even founded, eating some steak and ale, you know. A little bit of pie. Oh wow, so that look at the fish and chips. Go ahead and it's flaky. Yeah, looks good. Isn't fish like <laughs> if you want it to be. It's flaky. Is it? What did you think about that lunch? Um, it was good. It was I good. I fish and chips, but I didn't get mine until the very end. Yeah. So I felt like I was being rushed. Yeah. Uh, you I know, scarf it down. On these uh, bus tours, it's real quick. You got to eat, and we got about 10 minutes to look around. But we'll have to come back, because I'm really interested in seeing this town. So we'll have to make another, our next trip to England, we'll have to spend a little time, I guess. Wow, you see the buildings? Yeah, they're so, really neat. A lot of these buildings are dated back to like the 1300s. Look at that. <laughs> wow, architecture in here is just amazing. Like right out of a storybook, you know? Broke Camilla's heart. She really loved him. Broke Camilla's heart, so she went to to an old lover for comfort, Prince Charles. That's how it was. So uh, they divorced, and the house where they lived uh, was sold here in Corsham, and uh, um, it was bought by the drummer of the Pink Floyd, I think. He still lives there, if I'm not mistaken. So Corsham, a very traditional Cotswolds town. If you look on your right hand side, you can see the walls of the uh, boundary, the boundary properties are made with no mortar. Now it's mortar, but previously there was no mortar. <laughs> you paid attention. The, you see the gaps in between. When the stone is squared, is wet, and they build it with this wet stone, and then they wait to, for it to dry, and as it dries out, it expands. We still refer today to England, Angleland. Sometimes we say, talk about the Anglo-Saxon civilization. There were barbarians, so <clears throat> the previous population was Christian, and some of them, the Celtic, we call them Romano-British, the ones that preserved a lot of Celtic culture. They didn't get quite so Romanized as France and Spain and some other bits. Uh, they, they were Christian though, but they still preserved some of the Celtic, Celticity, <laughs> uh, they fought back. And the successful general that for one generation stopped the advance of Anglo-Saxon, we believed he was the basis for the legend of King Arthur of England in the Somerset. And uh, their King Arthur, ah, here on the right hand side, that is the blind house. That's that for the uh, people that are drunk. That's where they used to as you, some, some I heard didn't see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't do it anymore, although I think they, they're really good. And it is just joy to walk around. Um, I know you just had food, but you might want to try some fudge, some ice cream. There are also buns. Buns are famous. In Bath, there are two types of bun, actually. You can buy them to go. Bath buns are sweet and saloon buns are plain, but you can adapt them with the either savory or sweet serving. So that's where part of Frankenstein was written. We're here in Bath now, and they're known for their Roman baths, which were founded by the Romans. But they're about to close, so we're not gonna be able to show you that. We're just gonna walk around the city, take in, 
what we could take in and uh, maybe do a little shopping for some maybe candy because they're known for their candy they're known for their uh their their bath buns which is kind of like white bread with some frosting on it i don't know if we'll try that or not but uh yeah let's go check this out so we're here at the roman baths and this dates all the way back to well the romans and it's a it, they're, they're hot baths it's, it's a it's a hot spring technically the minerals would have been known to cure people of ailments and, and stuff like that but anyways it's about ready to close and we're not gonna have enough time uh, to do it but you could tell by the architecture that it's definitely Roman look at all the carvings little cherubs and just, just little things Wow that, that stained wet glass windows is amazing And that, that archway is amazing also. Uh, here's just some of the gift shops. Uh, I got some Harry Potter stuff. Some little knickknacks. Uh, a little bit of London in here, huh? Oh, you got a Paddington Bear and you got, ooh, they got the Queen Duck. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell that's got some Roman architecture to it. So this is the first time on this tour we've been alone to like explore. Because we've always been close to like the group. And now we can just walk around and take it. We've got exactly one hour. Um, too bad the baths weren't open until six. Then we would have been able to see them. I know I'm going to go off about the baths, right? Uh, Let's go ahead and take a look around and see what we got going on. There's Will. Uh, yeah, it's been a fun trip. It has. Oh, he wants to go the baths. Oh. Down there. Well, you can't really see, but he might be able to the camera. Here, this is the closest you're going to get to the the Roman baths. They're down. Outside. Yeah, they're down down there. You can't see, but they're they're just down there. Yeah. But yeah. Is that big boy's cousin? <laughs> I think it is, Don. Looks like him, don't it? Yeah, he's got like a. I think it is a big boy. He had something in his hand, but they took it off of there. Yeah, I think it took his hamburger. What? He's got his hand in his pocket. I guess. Well, the sun is, is setting. But it was an amazing day, a long day. Lots of fun. Uh, we also got to meet some of our friends. Just randomly, you guys saw that clip. And then we were on the bus with some more folks from Chicago that watch the channel. In fact, hi guys, you guys are probably watching this. But folks, that's gonna do it for today here in the beautiful city of Bath. We will be back to see it in its entirety. If you guys like this vlog, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't, please subscribe so you don't miss these upcoming road trip adventures. Guys, we are in England and we got a lot more coming up. We're only not even halfway done. Guys, we love you. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.